if you were to go a little bit into the design of the edfa this is an experiment that uh, you would do it's a part of the lab where you can think of now pumping the edfa either from the forward direction so this is the piece of the fiber in between you put a signal isolator so that the signal propagates only in this direction uh, you could also provide a backward pump and you could also do both forward pump and backward pump you can pump the system from both the directions so that is a bi-directional pumping system spectrum will look like this is a sample taken from our laboratory it is a slightly old spectrum uh, the pink line uh, here shows the amplified spontaneous emission what is amplified spontaneous emission now so we say that if I have a ground state E1 and an excited state E2 and you have already pumped my uh, EDFA, you have ions in the excited state and suppose there is no signal going into the EDFA, you are not giving any signal into the EDFA, then what happens? Uh, you will have spontaneous emission because of these ions getting uh, de-excited to the ground state. This spontaneously emitted photon will now excite the neighboring uh, erbium ion and this will now act like a signal to the neighboring erbium ion and there is and because it is a fiber and we said the edfa length is something like 5 meter to 10 meter or so on the, the spontaneous emission that happens in the beginning of the fiber will now act as the signal to the rest of the doped fiber. So, what you will get is amplified spontaneous emission. So, ASE is amplified spontaneous emission and the amplified spontaneous emission spectrum is what you are showing I have marked the outline in pink. That is a broadband because there is no specific. So, this, this amplified spontaneous emission typically gives you the signature of your gain spectrum for that pumping. So, uh, this is corresponding to a specific inversion and you will have spontaneous emission at all these wavelengths and all these wavelengths will get amplified as they propagate through the fiber. Right? Uh, this is the situation when you do not have a signal input, but the moment you have a signal input, you give a signal into the system there is no amplified spontaneous emission because your sp stimulated emission rate is becoming much more than the spontaneous emission rate. So, you will see that all your amplified spontaneous emission came down and what you are seeing in the green is the output spectrum when you have just the input signal. So, the you will see that the uh, AAC got suppressed, the AAC got suppressed simply because your stimulated emission because of the signal at the input itself was very large and it is the signal that will subsequently get amplified and not the noise. Right? But you will also see that even though in the presence of signal you still have some noise that is coming out in the system. So, you can now think of measuring, uh, you can now think of uh, measuring the signal power and the noise power and this ratio is what we call as optical signal to noise ratio. So, if this is my modulated data and next to the modulated data I have noise in the system. So, the ratio of power between the optical power, we are talking about the optical power, optical power at the peak which is your P sig and this floor which is your p noise is what is referred to as. So, OSNR is something that you can measure optical signal to noise ratio is a number that you measure in a optical spectrum analyzer. Remember we are not talking about the short noise or the thermal noise of the uh, receiver we are talking about the noise added by the amplifier. The good way of doing that measurement is directly uh, observing the spectrum at the output of the amplifier. You will see something like this, the ratio between these two is your OSNR. Uh, now, the question is if the noise is not flat, it is falling, where should I measure this? 
should I measure it very close, should I measure it very far away. So, that, that is decided by standards. So, ITU has come up with the standards on where you will have to measure the uh, optical signal to noise ratio and the standard says that you take two neighboring points which are not corresponding to the clock of the signal, you go away from the clock frequencies of the signal, you mark the noise floor at a offset frequency which is outside your clock frequency. So, if your data rate is 10 gigabaud, uh, your symbol rate is 10 gigabaud, you know that at, so you, this is your carrier frequency you know that there will be a null at plus 10 and minus 10. So, you choose these frequencies which are away from that and then you interpolate this value is the noise value that you have and what you are measuring here is actually signal plus noise. So, you subtract this p noise from here, so you get your p sig and then you divide it by p noise that is your signal to noise ratio. So, if you make a measurement at the center that is p sig plus p noise, if you interpolate and find out what this number is, what the power is that corresponds to the p noise, now you find out what is your p sig and divide it by p noise that is your optical signal to noise ratio. Okay. Um, there are a couple of other parameters that you would like to know about uh, EDFA. So, let us say you have uh, N 1 and N 2 are the population corresponding to E 1 and E 2 energy states. We are now looking at a concept called signal saturation. Uh, suppose my input signal, uh, so let us look at this plot as your inputs, so this shows the gain of the EDFA as a function of input signal power. Okay. Your input signal power is marked in uh, dBm and the gain is marked in dB. So, as your input signal power increases, the number of photons that are incident on the EDFA goes on increasing. If you were to maintain the same gain, so initially let us say uh, corresponding to minus 30 dBm, let us say there were uh, uh, one can calculate how many photons constitute minus 30 dBm, but for for uh, for for a sake of an example, let us say there are 1000 photons for a low signal power. If you were to get a gain of uh, 20 dB for instance, which means 100 times, how many photons do I need at the output? I have 1000 photons at the input. I need a gain of 20 dB, 20 dB is 100 times, how many photons would I need at the output? I would need 1000 times 100, which means that those many transitions have to happen from the upper state to lower state. So, I need to have 10 power 5 ions at least in the upper state. Okay. Let us say I need 10 power 5 ions to achieve a gain of 20 dB now. now let us say 10 power 5 photons at the input. So, I am increasing my power and now I have you know 10 power 5 photons instead of 1000 photons. The question is can I get the same gain? To be able to get the same gain I should have 10 power 7 photons coming out, which means I should have 10 power 7 ions in the excited state. But the problem is that the number of ions in the excited state is limited by the dopant concentration. You cannot excite the system more than your dopant concentration. Your dopant concentration is a hard limit on how much is the excitation possible. So, what it means is that as you go to higher signal power, because of the fact that the number of ions in the excited state are clamped by the dopant concentration the number of ions that comes out of the system will start getting limited with the result that let us say there are only 10 power 6 ions, let us say there are only 10 power 6 as the dopant concentration, which means that you cannot get 10 power 7, your gain is clamped by 10 power 6. 
right so it simply means that as you increase your input signal power the gain actually starts falling down and this phenomena is called as signal saturation right so when you have large signal power your stimulated rate becomes comparable to the pumping rate there is a reduction in gain um, and as you increase your pump power what happens is you can so so what happens when you increase a pump power and you increase a pump power you are pushing more and more ions into the excited state so there could be more gain but as you uh, increase your signal power the rate at which your signal is falling on my system is becoming much larger than the rate at which you are able to emit from the system. So, when that happens you will have both signal saturation and this signal saturation uh, you quantify by using this number called p sat. So, this is the uh, power input power at which the gain falls to 3 dB less than the uh, small signal value. So, this is what we were talking about small signal gain earlier. Small signal gain is assuming that the input signal power is not large, it is not large enough to cause a saturation. So, when you are trying to use a EDFA in a communication link, you need to now decide whether uh, you want to operate under the saturated condition or you are operating under the small signal condition. So, typically in the data sheet of EDFA, what you will get, get is when you say gain, it is a small signal gain that they would have given. They would have also given the p sat input saturation power, input signal power at which the gain drops to 3 dB below. You can also write it in terms of output saturation, where the x axis is now output signal power, y axis is still the gain. I mean, you can derive uh, the same plot, either represent the same plot as uh, input saturation plot or as an output saturation plot, both represents the same thing. But this output signal power plot tells you what is the hard limit on the power that you can extract out of the EDFA. So, these are the two numbers to keep in mind while you are doing a uh, link design with an EDFA. Uh, so, the key uh, specification sheet number for an EDFA, uh, typical maximum gain is about 20 to 40 dB depending on the EDFA that you are choosing. Insertion loss is about 2 dB, which means that if you are not pumping in, the EDFA by itself uh, will provide a loss of about 2 dB. It is not polarization sensitive because as we just discussed, it is because the amplification happens because of the stimulated emission and stimulated emission will uh, retain all the properties of the incident signal. The pump source is optical, which is typically a uh, laser diode. The optical bandwidth over which the performance is flat is about 40 nanometer. Maximum output power is about 23 dBm and the typical noise figure is about 4 to 5 dB. Right? So, these are the parameters of the EDFA. So, this concludes the physical layer description of the EDFA. Now, what we need to do next is the uh, noise figure and signal to noise ratio of the EDFA.